You got distracted at exactly the wrong time for that theme song. I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. This is going to be one of those, uh, one of those recordings. I think <laughs> sometimes that happens. A little sometimes. bit of a struggle. <laughs> So, how are you? Great. Welcome back to the Kilted Balls podcast, everybody. Yes. Oh my gosh, I hope you've been having a great week. I feel like it's been forever since we've been on here. I love your shirt. Are those bats? Those are bats. And what does Gina think of whatever that is on your face? She she, she says it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I went and got my hair cut on uh friday and i've been i've been going to felicia actually it would have been late 2000s like after like after they opened back up being able to get your hair cut for covid is when i started going to her because my other girl disappeared and so you know i found felicia and i've been i've been going to her ever since so is her name really felicia it's really felicia and do you say bye felicia every time you leave i don't i should (laughs) i don't know why you would (laughs) <laughs> and Bye, Felicia. <laughs> but uh, so she's like, Friday when she's cutting my hair, she's like, I cannot even take you serious with that thing on your face. <laughs> she says you look like a state trooper. I was like, from I was Super thinking, Troopers. Yeah. I was thinking more like a seventies movie star. I was but, thinking um, like an eighties. You know, yeah. like you're trying to channel your inner Tom Selleck, but like oh, yeah. not a cute version. <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not that thick yet. She said, but she but when she said I look like a a, a a state officer, I thought that was hilarious. Oh my gosh, it's so She's funny! Like, I can see you writing me a ticket for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina PD, baby, mm-hmm. right freaking there. So yeah, well, I still have it. I thought for sure I'd shave it by now, but it's still all right. Yeah, it doesn't seem horrid. It doesn't seem bad. Um, so I had a birthday last week. And look at what my father-in-law made me. Oh, that is awesome. Nice. What kind of wood is it? It is South American Babinga wood. B-U-B-I-N-G-A. That's awesome. And the only reason I know that is because he put a little tag in there. Oops. That says handcrafted by Papa Chuck 2022. That was awesome. Yeah, I haven't tried. I'm gonna I'm gonna write it on some scrap paper. Well, none of this is scrap paper. I'll write when it I was doing when I was doing nice. uh, a lot of my when I was doing the woodworking, like putting together the table, the gaming table, and everything, I was at the woodworking store a lot, and I saw a lot of those kits. But you know, not having the lathe and not really reason to get a lathe to make that table. Right. But, they have so many cool woods and just odd stuff. They have so many. And he's made, I think, a pen for everybody. I think Brennan and me are probably the last. You know, he gave it to us in these nice little boxes. It was, That's it was super cool. awesome. Right? I was like, oh, nice. So that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. And you missed a killer birthday party. Oh, I wasn't invited. Well, I think. It seems like, like if you have a group of friends that are that are all chatting in one area and you're just trying to leave one person out you would include everybody else in the <laughs> other area because i know you guys didn't talk in person the whole time so it's interesting because like it, we talked a lot about like where's jer where's jer right mm-hmm. and like a lot of people like people like you barely even know we're like where's jer at and it was funny because we're like did his wife not know or was she not doing it because you live so far away? And so she didn't think it. And I went with the, she didn't do it purposely because he would have felt bad if you had driven all the way up there. Like he would have been happy, but he also would have felt guilty. You know what I mean? Cause he would not do that. Like counterwise, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, I, but there's not a lot of people who have that mentality, men, 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 mentality <laughs> to do that. But yeah, that I would do that in a second. Everyone getting together. Like yeah. I wouldn't have driven up just for that. I would have come up Friday, hung out, been right. there Saturday, and then, you know, hung out a little bit on Sunday and headed home. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah. So it was his wife who didn't reach out to me. His wife invited everybody in her group. And the funny part was like when I walked in the door, I don't know if I was the last person, but I was for sure the last person from our D and D group. Mm -hmm. And his jaw like hit the floor and was like, how did you not tell me? How did you keep a secret? How did you keep it a secret when we're teasing you about your birthday nonstop? How did you keep your mouth shut? And I'm like, they said to keep it a secret. And they're like, how did you do that? And I'm like, and it's funny because somebody earlier this week was like, oh, I got to tell you a secret. They're like, but you can't tell anybody. And I know you're bad at keeping secrets. I'm like, do you understand that my job means I have to keep like so much stuff confidential, like oodles and oodles of confidential stuff comes across my desk every single day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, so I guess it's good that you think I can't keep a secret because it means you don't realize how many secrets I have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but That's so I hilarious. thought that was funny. But yeah, he's like, I don't understand. And like, they must have thought that I was really drinking hard. But like, I don't know if you can see this bottle. This is what I was drinking Wednesday. Mm-hmm. This is the size of it. Yeah. And you can see how much is gone. Mm hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I drink my whiskey out of pint glasses and that's all the whiskey I drank on Wednesday. I mm-hmm. I don't know why you guys think I was um, inebriated. <laughs> no, I mean, the pirate didn't even come out and we no. I, and Dave had made that comment. So, yes, he was like, well, you were looking really kind of beat. And I'm like, I was like, we had had a snow day and it's like the stressful time of this year and I'm busy. I was. By eleven o'clock, I was done. Like I was. Yeah, tired. you had a you had a, a long week, meaning you, I didn't seem like you got a lot of sleep last week. Right, right. From the outside looking in. Yeah, and it was just busy in general, right, mm-hmm. and stressful. So, okay. and just because you know snow days and rescheduling everything, and mm. you know it just messes everything up. Sense. And you know, I'm like, yeah, it was just yeah, not that it was bad at all, but you, I'm not going to be like. By the time 11 hits, I'm going to be like, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, we were at Myrtle Beach and we had a great time and I was slightly sad not to be there, but we had an awesome time. Yeah. I I mean, we did axe throwing, which I've never done before. And I think I'm going to build an axe throwing place. I've thought about it before. Mm -hmm. And now after playing there, I'm like, uh, for sure. We're going to be having an axe throwing. You used to be really good at, but I guess you weren't using the axe. You were using more. You had a knife, didn't you? Didn't you always throw a knife? Um, I used to have knives. So it's so funny. You know that because I was laughing with Amy and I think maybe Dave. um, Like I didn't talk about the knife at all, but you know, for those of you who don't know, I grew up on a farm and one of my chores growing up always in the fall was splitting wood. Like that, that was my job probably from the time, I don't know, like maybe 10 or 11. Like if I was sitting around the house, they'd be like, go out and split some wood. Mm -hmm. I'd go out and we had tons of wood. There was always wood and I would be out there splitting wood. And so like, if I wasn't busy, it was get your ass outside and split some wood. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make sure I was always gone or busy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But when you're a teenager and you're splitting wood and you don't want to be splitting wood and you're. Like, you know, we didn't have headphones and stuff back then, right? And I had a, my normal axe that I used was a double-bladed axe. And so I just sit there and like throw it at the wood pile, (laughs) you know, over and over and over. Like, so that was like my thing. And so this was different because they're like one pound hatchets, like Mm -hmm. this big, you know, but still it was, it was amusing to me. Because I go to do it and they're all laughing because Fred is there, right? And mm-hmm. you know Fred, he's kind of like an a-hole. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, oh yeah, it's not a Frisbee. He can't throw it. And I'm sitting here going, and Amy's like, what are you like <laughs> talking about? And they're showing everybody how to throw and do everything. And like I grab it and I'm like, thunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then like I'm playing like with everybody else and I'm doing stuff and he comes around once. He's like, oh, well, we should do teams. He goes, but, you know, heat ball can't throw it all. So I don't know who's going to want him on their team. And I'm like, 
And the people who've been playing like with me are all like, mm-hmm. like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's this coming from? <laughs> like, what? Like, apparently you're not watching what everybody else is watching. And so, you know, then like we played a game and it was like boys versus girls. I don't know how it went that way, but you would take turns and each of you would throw three. And so like, I wasn't like perfect, but I'd like walk up and be like, thunk, thunk, thunk. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, damn. And I'd pull my three and give it to somebody else. And See, when I did it the first time, I, I was thinking of you and I was like, Brian would be really good at this. And do you remember it was right? It was shortly after that. I had my character for Joe's campaign. Remember, I had the, yes. I had the two, and that was why I had so I had so much fun doing that. I wasn't very good. So but, you can see my desire now to build mm-hmm. one. I'm like, that is not that hard for me to build, mm-hmm. and to have like summer leagues, set up a few like bar spots there by the barn, and mm-hmm. go out and throw hatchets. I'm like, that'd be a good time. I think that'd be awesome. I think it'd be fun. So. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. So axe throwing, people, axe throwing. Good that time. super awesome. So what made you go to Myrtle Beach? Well, we were supposed to go to the mountains. Oh, okay. And my timeshare in the mountains, they have a, they have a uh, water park for the kids. So that's, mm-hmm. we were just looking to get away for the weekend. And I need to use, I need to use my weeks up and all that. So it's like I went to book it and I noticed their water park was closed from the 18th to the 2nd. Oh, so I was like this, is, and I was, you know, I told Gina like, oh, I guess we're just staying home. But I was just like, I really wanted to get away. So there's a place that we like to go to in Myrtle Beach, which has a, a water park too for the kids. Right, it's right on the beach. So I, they had they had some sale going on. So it was just a couple hundred bucks to go down there, and you know, I had the full kitchen and everything. So we take food, and I mean, you know, we, there's a wing place we really like. So we go out for that, but everything else we just cooked and made in the room. And really, the like and had the last time, time I was like at your house, you guys never cooked in, and now you go on vacation and you cook in. <laughs> well, I'm cooking in more. Oh, oh, well, that's good at just, least. Just, it was just a lazy stage. We're laughing right now because, well, I think we would actually need to like analyze it. But it's so expensive to go out right now, depending on where you go. Mm -hmm. But it costs five bucks for a dozen eggs. So it's not that cheap to eat. (laughs) I'm like, like, this is this is sketchy. (laughs) They're they're trying to make it closer and closer. I mean, the, the hard part about going out like there's there's not where where we are. There's not a huge variety. So like we're going in to charlotte like to get different things and still it's not like up in michigan where like to me in michigan there's a ton of variety because there's a lot of different kinds of people there oh i was confused because i'm like why would we have more variety than north carolina like i would think you guys would have more charlotte's a much younger city like as far as that's concerned and and there are just southerners forever and allow people are moving in but I mean, there's, you can find some different things, but to me, you know, especially like being in the Detroit area, I mean, it's a little different in Lansing, but still, I mean, Lansing, look at from, from your place. I mean, you can get, you can get Ethiopian if you want, you can get Indian food, you can get Mediterranean, like easy, those three things. Yeah. I mean, and and it's not like anything like for my birthday, I was like, Amy's like, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, well, this or this, she's like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I go, I'd like some uh, pad thai. And she mm-hmm. goes, okay, well, it's a long way away. It's like eight miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh, well, I want to go to this place. Oh, speaking about the universe, like, oh, my gosh, this has happened so much in the last two weeks. It's so funny. But I'm like, oh, I want pad thai. But you know what? I'm kind of lazy. Let's just go to this place in DeWitt, like some Chinese place. And she's like, mm-hmm. all right. So we drive over there. We walk in. Only thing on their menu, pad thai. <laughs> She's like, well, apparently that's a sign. I'm like, that is awesome. Apparently that's a sign. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Well, d- speaking on that, we're talking about doing uh, a little by little, you know, just uh, taking those baby steps. Yes. So last, I can't remember. It might have been after we recorded. It was because I remember for sure you, had, you, you, you were writing a lot and I was like, I can't let Brian write everything. So I moved my alarm to 530. And I started waking up at 5.30. I do some stretches. 
and then well actually my idea was to do some stretches right and then start my day at six like take my shower blah 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 but i've been doing my stretches then i shower then i'm out of the shower and i have you know 20 30 minutes where i've been getting some writing done before everyone else starts to wake up and the day starts so it's been nice working working that in and just having that and 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 i re- read it in a book like waking or i heard an interview i don't remember but waking up before everybody else and having that me time but i'm using that to write and get some ideas down and stuff like that so yes. super excited about that and just getting you know just getting some of that moving forward it's interesting and i think we've talked about it maybe once or twice in my family None of us have issues waking up early. You know, Amy has issues waking up early, right? But the rest of us, I don't know if we have huge issues, but all of us, I think, prefer to work at night for the same reasons. Like okay. we want it quiet. We want nobody around. And so we'll naturally stay up like I do super late because mm-hmm. nobody's around and you can work. Yeah. But the how's the waking up and going? Has it been hard? You've done it for a week now. No, it hasn't been bad. I mean, it's tough. So Fridays are always tough because we're playing we're games till midnight, 1230. Yes. So I'm usually slow moving on Fridays anyways. But, you know, besides that, it's I mean, just the half hour was I almost did five. And I was like, I could get so much more done in that hour. But my concern was on the nights that I stay up later, it's going to be more difficult for me. Right. Like it's going to be like the 10 to 11 playing D&D is going to be tough or or playing Dominion at 10 yes. o'clock. I mean, it's going to be hard at 10. I would agree. My um, this year, the entire year, right, for me, which starts back in like August, um, I did a similar tweak mm-hmm. for totally not those reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but we started our trading strategy and it was at six o'clock. Mm-hmm. And what happened last year often was I would wake up at six 30. Right. And that meant I had basically 30 to 40 minutes to get ready. Mm-hmm. Right. And I like, I didn't mind that, but it was like rush, 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 get ready and be out the door. Mm-hmm. And because of our trading strategy, My alarm this whole year has been set for 5.55. I snooze it once to like 6.05. And somewhere between 5.55 and 6.05, I'm awake and moving and doing my stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't accomplish anything else. (laughs) But it makes the morning just a little bit slower and easier. And Mm -hmm. it's nice knowing that if I wanted to sleep in a little bit extra, I probably could. But I haven't. I just get up and... Yeah, that's funny because at the beginning of the year, mine was 630 Mm because that's when I had to wake Ali up. Mm. So I was waking Ali up, showering, printing orders, doing everything. And then we're walking out the door by seven. And I did that for a few weeks. And I was just like this. That's that's not me. I don't like to rush around. Right. That's when I went to six. And then, you know, even then, but I wasn't doing anything. I mean, we were doing our trading strategy which I could do that and not, not worry, but I could print the orders and, and not really be in a rush and, yeah. you know, everything like that. But yeah, I'm enjoying the, I'm enjoying the five thirty. Although I think it was, maybe it was Monday. I just didn't, I was like, do I really No, I was falling asleep Sunday. Like maybe I should switch that to six. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I didn't. I was like, no. Well, as we get older, we're probably going to need less sleep. Oh, that picture you sent me just came through. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the start of it. I love it. Um, so we talked a little bit about doing the hard things. We talked a little bit about making little changes in our life, right? And I see these TikToks that are like, just do this one thing and just do this. And I like all that. But something that I thought of today, and it was so weird. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like talking and I don't know why. But I said something about whales Mm -hmm. and I don't remember why I said it. And everybody around me was like, yeah, whales, whales are the best. They're so awesome. Whales. ah." And I'm like, yeah, whales are cool. And we're all like, yeah, let's go take a trip and see whales. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, 
this highlights finding your people. All those people, they love that time of their day. And it's because they're with their people. Mm-hmm. And I, I've had that conversation with one of my older daughters. I'm like, one of the things about college is you need to get out there. Like, it's hard because people sometimes are introverted and it's scary. I go, but you got to get out there and find your people. Because once you find your people, mm-hmm. like, that's the holy grail. And I worry about people, honestly, like, uh, you know, one of our friends who, like, they got married right away. You know, or they have a girlfriend right out of high school and they don't want to talk to anybody or meet anybody. They mm-hmm. just want to spend all their time with them, which is, yeah, that's great. But you're never going to find your people because mm-hmm. you're stuck with that person. Mm-hmm. And I think you need to explore with that person more people, not mm-hmm. not like not like explore like being a swinger, exploring yeah. like, hey, no, you're exactly let's go right. meet people. Mm -hmm. I think finding your people is like such an important thing. People who speak your languages, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, that's something that we've talked about a little bit, like when we're writing and doing stuff is finding your people. And it all, this one kind of hit me because it was all about whales. And I'm like, that's why I love doing this because you're my people. Mm -hmm. Right. And it could have been anything, right. I could have said anything. And, but that was what they were all like. Yeah. And I was like, yeah my people and that's for awesome. them they were like my people and i'm like that's what you need right mm-hmm. yeah exactly it's a huge i mean i i it, and it's people say it gets harder as you get older and it, it it's harder like i don't think i can meet anybody now and have a relationship like i have with you we've been friends forever that's a long time but I, I mean, I've, I'm super blessed, especially the, the the three of us boys, like we've been hanging out for so long and to still have, you know, a very, very good relationship is, is super, super cool. But you can still you can still find those people when you're doing your things, just like you bringing me into the group with with Joe and Nate and, and all those guys, like all those guys are awesome. Oh, my gosh. They were so I don't want to make you feel weird, but they were so sad you weren't there. <laughs> And like so, some people were like, why isn't Jer here? And I'm like, I didn't tell Jer. And they're like, why didn't you tell him to get his butt up here? And I'm like, because he would have. I go, he <laughs> would have been here. And they're like, and some of them were like, oh, you're totally right. He would have been here. And like other people who don't know any of us, like mm-hmm. some of the wives are like, right. That's why you tell him because he would be there. And I'm like, no, that's why you don't tell him. And they're like, don't you want him here? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, yes. We all would love to have him here. <laughs> well, then why didn't you tell him? Because then he would have been here. And they they didn't understand yeah. that logic. Right? And I think it's hard for people who don't know all the interworkings to understand that. But it's like a thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like like I would like I have a brother-in-law who will never tell the father-in-law that he's working on a project. Because the father-in-law will come to help with the project. No. <laughs> and is he thankful for the help? Yes. Does he mind mm-hmm. time? No. It's all great. But he, but he doesn't want that. Like, that's not, like, it's weird. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he wants it. But by that person coming and helping, then he feels obliged. Yeah. And it's like this weird thing. And he doesn't mm-hmm. like that weirdness. And I'm like. I totally get you. Like Amy gets so mad because I'll do so much stuff and I won't ask for help. And she's like, why? I'm terrible like, asking for help. Right. Because then you feel obliged to give the help. And so it's like a weird thing. And it's different for people like us mm-hmm. because we have so much experience. Like there, there is no tit for tat anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we have gone, like, it's like when you're married, right? There is no tit for tat. There shouldn't be people. If you're mm-hmm. doing tit for tat for your wife, that's weird. Right. Like, because you've already surpassed that amount in so many different ways that it's meaningless. Mm-hmm. But if it's some like person that you don't have that relationship with, it feels like, like you're like, Oh, you helped me. I should probably help you, mm-hmm. right? Oh, you got me a Christmas gift. I should give you a Christmas gift, right? Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, like for me, I've like, if my sister gets me a Christmas gift, that's wonderful. It's great. She probably will. Mm -hmm. If I don't get her a Christmas gift, I don't feel bad. And if she doesn't give me one, I don't feel bad. We've mm-hmm. given each other so many gifts. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it's nice. Some it's... of the wives don't understand that, but <laughs> no, but you get the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and so for some people, that's their love language, right? Yeah. So like for my birthday, this is what I got. Mm-hmm. And the book, I got this in that book, but like my family didn't get me any gifts. And on one hand, the the normal part of me is like yeah whatever i don't care Mm -hmm. right on the other hand that's one of my love languages yes so i'm like why why would why wouldn't you give me a gift Mm -hmm. it takes two seconds on amazon to get you know and like for them they're like yeah we never know what to get you we never know what to do like are you are you serious like i'm like the easiest person they're like you're not the easiest person i'm like I literally am like everybody knows people on this podcast know things I like and get them for me like I'm like mm-hmm. people you know which is okay mm-hmm. right but it's like <laughs> it's like that thing yeah so it, so it depends on your language too that yes. doesn't matter when you're dealing with people where that's not your love language with that people yeah so. well it's it's funny because I mean we already had the plans I take that back I did get a great gift that night. That was also my love language. So that. Okay. That works that, out. That well. was pretty sweet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, that works out really well. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is my love language right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gift I've been waiting for. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I was, I mean, I was a little sad, but obviously it was fine. Yeah. And I would have been sad. If I were in your shoes, I would have been very sad. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to ask Nate for his wife's number so I can give her peace of my mind. (laughs) And it's totally her fault. (laughs) Like I said, we couldn't. Somebody was like, why wouldn't you guys tell Jer? And I'm like, for the group, we only see Jer on Wednesday. Yeah. So it would we it never came up because that's also when we were forced to keep it a secret yes and then it was never a topic of conversation any other time see i was thinking it was uh actually i guess i didn't even think who put it together but i was like okay like you guys had to have started a new chat group like everyone but nate and me for whatever reason and you're you were chatting in that group about it like okay this is what's going on blah 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 and I was like, why would they leave me out? Like thinking like, oh, he probably wouldn't make it. So let's just not say no, anything. To there him was anyway. no chat group. Yeah. No, there was none of that. that out. That makes yeah. it even worse. There's no <laughs> chat group. His wife invited us on what? E-invite. So okay. I don't even know if we knew who was invited. Okay. Right. But they put an E-invite out. And I don't know even... There were a lot of people there, so it wasn't yeah. just our group. Yeah, Though yeah, our group sure. is obviously the most important people there. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe his sister was up there too. But yeah, so it was just an e-bite, and it said, hey, we're doing this finally. Bring your spouse. Don't bring kids. We're axe throwing. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, and none of us talked about it ever. Okay. Right? So like, I never talked to I eat lunch with those guys, right? Mm-hmm. Never came up once. Okay. Literally zilch. <laughs> and you had said it Thursday, right? It was Thursday night you had said it, that you were doing it. Oh, I might have said it Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. But it never came up in conversation. Did, no, to time. me, it was just yes. you and I. That's yeah. what I mean. But it never came yeah. up any other time. Okay. Like if it ever came up, I would have been like, yeah, yeah, this is what we're doing. I also didn't know. If I'd be doing it. Yes, I do remember you saying that. So even on like Saturday, I'm calling Amy from my meet and she's like, we're not really going, are we? And I was like, yeah, I I think I'm going to go. And she's like, yeah, I don't know if we should. And I was like, you don't have to. And she goes, would you go without me? And I'm like, hell yeah. And I go, actually, I go, that made the decision. 
I go, I'm going for sure. <laughs> you don't have to go. Mm-hmm. And then she was like, um, no, I'm going. And I'm like, okay, then <laughs> Then we're going. So it's <laughs> awesome. Cause the weather here was supposed to be in our area. Yeah. Stupid bad. It was supposed to yeah. be like six inches and it ended up happening, but the highways were all clear. It was 32 yeah, so degrees. Were fine. Yeah. You're fine. But and like any- getting all the way to, this makes sense to you, not to our listeners. Getting to Howell was bad. Okay. But that's where the band of snow stopped. And then it was easy going the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. And then coming back, we're like, oh man, it's going to be so bad when we hit Fowlerville. Mm-hmm. And we zipped right by. And it wasn't bad until we got all the way home. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. yeah any listeners out there, if you're unfamiliar with the five love languages, it's it's an amazing amazing book for for any relationships but especially relationships with uh with spouses and loved ones like that i had a person who was really surprised because they were talking about love languages and they're like you really know your love languages like pretty well and like people around you i'm like um it was my training at work and they're like why would your work be talking about love languages and i'm like because knowing people's love languages helps you communicate better and understand them better in the work environment. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so people understanding because it manifests differently. That's what I was trying to tell them. Yes. Like, it's a different manifestation. So like one of my love languages is physical touch, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a very physical person. That's like one of my things. I obviously can't express it that way at work and it would be inappropriate for other people to express it that way so Mm -hmm. it manifests itself differently in that environment but it still will manifest itself and there's just different ways and like learning about that and people learning about that and learning how to talk to me makes it a lot better right Mm -hmm. and like i'm trying to think of things like there's certain things that don't matter to me at all but they matter to other people Mm -hmm. Right. And so like knowing that is good. So it helps. But yeah, so people know your love languages, know everybody around you's love languages. And it's just helpful. Right. Mm -hmm. Gina, actually this weekend, she she had said that I was her love language. I don't remember reading that section. I'm going to have to go back and. No, just the all of you. All Mm -hmm. of you. Um, Speaking about (laughs) making those connections, you were talking like about our D&D group, right? Mm -hmm. And so obviously we have something because we've been together forever and ever. Right. Mm -hmm. But we made pretty damn good connections with that group in a relatively short period of time, Mm -hmm. like a really short period of time. And it actually kind of blew Amy's mind. I think like she talked about how cute it was seeing us all together. She's like, because you guys are all hugging each other. Like mm-hmm. anytime, none of you had any qualms about hugging. And for those of you who don't know, these are like big ass, full grown man. I would say most of them over six feet tall, which by the freaking way, Douglas is literally a giant. <laughs> like I don't know if I can express how big he is. And like when you see him and I've seen him kind of before, but it's still a shock. And I was like, when I saw him, I'm like, it's just amazing how big you are. And he goes, it's because of my camera placement. And I'm like, what? He goes, I place my camera high. So you're always looking down at me. He goes, so all of your experience with me is a viewpoint that makes you feel taller than me. He goes, but then you see me. <laughs> and I'm like, way the hell up here. I'm like, that's what it is. But like, Amy's like, you know, how long have you like known these guys? And I'm like, like, you know, she knows some of them, right? Mm-hmm. But she's like, you guys are like so close already. And she goes, and like, they talk about Jer like he's one of their brothers, you know? So like, you mm-hmm. came up a lot, right? We talk about you all the time. And I'm like, this is literally the first time I've been in the same physical space as Wade. Yeah. I go, I've never been in the physical space. Wade was so upset. He didn't get to see you last time you were up, by the way. 
he, was he, he for he, he seemed like it because how he wrote he was just yes. yeah because something came up with was yeah it was like something came up and he was like way the hell up north because mm-hmm. of it and he was so upset he's like i would have done it he goes but it was like you know 11 30 when i got home and i knew mm-hmm. you guys wouldn't still be there i'm like wade we're always there i didn't even have any idea what he was talking about yeah I'm yeah like, i'm like i don't know <laughs> i'm like we're always there but so she's like really and i'm like first off this shows you that it doesn't have to be in person or virtual. Like people are like, you can't make good connections virtually. I'm like, like hell, Mm -hmm. like Wade and I together was no different than Wade and I virtual, except I could touch him. Yeah. (laughs) Like that was the only difference. And it was Mm -hmm. awesome and great. And like, that's what I'm like, that virtual was just as big of a connection. And we formed that connection in what, what has it been? Two, three years? Yeah. And I would argue that it's it had been like that, you know, for a while. It's not like it took that long. It's something that no. happened pretty quickly, I think. It, because if you're with your people. Mm-hmm, exactly. If you're with your people. Been, yeah. Way to circle that back around right at the end. Well, let me give you a better example. You and I have done D&D campaigns with other people. You and I have hung out with other people. And I am clearly the odd man out in most of those groups because it's really obvious they aren't my people. Right? Mm -hmm. Like they're not my people. And so I can't mesh with them. Like I've I've tried. And don't get me wrong, people. I'll hang out with them. I'm nice as Mm -hmm. I can be and I'm friendly. But there's never that like bond. Right? Yeah. Like if one of them fell in front of me, I'd probably just keep walking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right whereas if one of those guys fell i would probably laugh at him mm-hmm. so, you know, i always think that's the sign of true friendship so yes exactly but yeah it's kind of like the thing it's kind of the thing so anyway people it's been great talking with kilted but we are running out of time yes so thank you for joining us i hope you pulled something out of the podcast and uh this is ballbuster signing off kilted dragon jerry love you all